Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. The Woods family is moving to their new home in the countryside. The parents, Kira and Brian, are very proud of the house they bought for their children, Stephen and Ellie. Their son Stephen is also excited, but Ellie is the complete opposite. She hates having to leave her friends behind and feels disconnected from her parents, thinking they don't understand her. This house they just acquired for a price well below the market, strangely has a name and is called Zeo's, something really strange. They notice there is an old painting of a man with two fingers raised in letters of an unknown alphabet under some doors with a small triangle drawing below. When they open the basement door to look, they don't find it interesting, so when Ellie tries to leave, the door closes before her. She immediately asks them to open it, but the door strangely jams, preventing it from being opened both inside and out. That's when Ellie feels as if something is approaching in the dark, and she becomes increasingly scared, starting to scream for them to open the door quickly. Fortunately, Kira sees the key hanging on a nail next to it, so Brian uses it to let her out. At night, Kira asks Ellie to take care of Stephen because she and Brian need to go to the office for a very important business meeting. At a certain moment, while Ellie is talking on the phone with a friend, she suddenly gets a big scare with a strange figure, but soon sees that it was just her brother Stephen, wearing a cape and a strange skull that he found in a hidden compartment in the game room, where their parents didn't know about this hidden compartment. Then Ellie checks and finds a plaque that said Solve E.T. Coagula, an old record player, and an abacus. Stephen says that some classmates talked about the house belonging to a witch who made a pact with the devil. They then play the record player, but instead of some music, the recording plays a man's voice reading the strange equation written on the record itself. Some time later, a strange breeze comes from under the basement door and cuts off the power throughout the house. Ellie then calls her mother about the problem. Kira tells her to go down to the basement to check the breakers, as it must have been what caused the problem. Ellie initially refuses to do this, but her mother convinces her and even with much fear, she goes. When she sees the stairs leading to the bottom of the completely dark basement, Ellie says she can't do it, so Kira tells her a little trick she uses when she needs to clear her mind, saying it was just counting from 1 to 10. Kira guides Ellie over the phone, encouraging her with each step she takes counting a number. But with each step she took her fear increased, as strange things happened, like the basement door moving and a strange wind coming from down there. Ellie, even crying with fear, manages to take the 10 steps, but on the last one, she closes her eyes and falls. On the other side of the line, Kara can hear her continue counting beyond number 10 without responding anymore, just counting, which clearly scares her and then she immediately heads back home with Brian. When they get there, they can't find Ellie anywhere, so they call the police. A quick search in the woods around is made, but without success, and as there is no evidence of any crime happening and Ellie had run away from home before, the police just tell the parents to wait for news, as she is probably at a friend's house. The next morning, the family asks some neighbors for help and they go to the forest to search again, but the result is the same. Brian understands that Ellie was angry with them, so he says it's natural that she might have run away again, but Kara doesn't think that's the case, she firmly believes something happened to Ellie, because of how strange her voice sounded while counting after number 10. The next day, Kira starts spreading missing posters of Ellie and forgets to pick up Stephen from school until the teacher calls her. As soon as her son is with her, Kira goes to the police station to see if there are any updates, but the detective doesn't have much to say, only that they checked the security cameras at bus and train stations, also called Ellie's friends, but there are no leads, especially since they also didn't find her phone. The only important thing the detective can comment on is the fact that Ellie was bullied and harassed on social media for a while. Feeling guilty for not knowing this, Kira asks the forensic team to check the basement, because she is convinced that her daughter did not run away. However, once again, the detective reminds her that since this is not a criminal case, he cannot do much more. When she returns home, Kira notices that the phrase Salviti Coagula is carved above the front door, so she decides to search Google about it while Stephen plays with his ball, throwing it against the basement door. The search results reveal that this phrase is linked to ancient alchemy and meant dissolve and coagulate. The related photos show a five-pointed star and a picture of a strange snake. Annoyed by the noise the ball was making on the basement door, Kara calls Stephen, who comes to her, dropping his ball near the door. Kara asks him how it was on the night Ellie disappeared, and the boy tells his mother that nothing out of the ordinary happened, the only different thing they did was to play an old record player. 
Considering it unimportant, Kira turns her attention back to the computer to check Ellie's social networks, where she discovers that her daughter had made an anarchist tattoo that she never told her family about. Later, Kira decides to check the basement again, but before entering, she notices there is a pentagon above the door. Down there, she realizes that there are Roman numerals on the steps of the staircase and an equation at the end of it, just like the one on the record player. But the biggest surprise she has is when, using a UV light tube, she reveals several disturbing faces painted on a wall. This is enough for the police to finally send a forensic team, which, when they finish examining the place, closes the basement door and Stephen's ball falls in there. Unfortunately, the police do not find any other clues and the only thing they can say is that the painting has been there since the 1950s. When asked about what they knew about the house, Brian says they don't know much, that they bought it at an auction for a good price and that it used to belong to an elderly lady. Night falls and the whole family goes to sleep, but Kara is woken up by Stephen, who says he wet the bed. After changing the sheets, Kara goes to the bathroom and tries to call her daughter's cell phone again, but it goes to voicemail and she is upset. Suddenly, Kara can hear the sound of a whisper that seemed to be Ellie's voice that was still counting. The sound seemed to come from the sink plumbing. However, the voice can still be heard when she leaves the bathroom, so Kara follows it to see where it was coming from, and when she arrives, she realizes it was coming stronger from the basement. When she enters, she accidentally kicks Stephen's ball, which starts falling down the stairs and the sound of it bouncing continues for longer than it should take to reach the last step. Kara turns on the light and goes down as well, but she can't find the ball anywhere and again observes the strange equation on the last step. In the morning, Brian wakes up and finds that Kara did not return to bed that night. He goes looking for her and finds her staring at the symbols above the doors, telling her husband about the symbol and asking him if he knew what it meant, if he had ever thought about it. She also copied the equation from the basement on a piece of paper. Brian tries to console her, saying that their daughter will return, but he also needs to go to the meeting with the investors to not lose the work they did. Later, Kara calls her real estate agent to ask for information about the previous owner of the house. Unfortunately, he doesn't have much information, only knowing that the former owner was the daughter of a well-known academic who was the first owner of the house, but he promises to try to find out more. Still wanting more answers and trying to do something useful to find out where her daughter is, Kara starts taking pictures of the symbols above the doors before going to work. She sends the photos to her secretary and asks her to look up their meaning while she attends a meeting, but there, her concern does not allow her to pay much attention, so she leaves. But before she can leave the building, she is stopped by her secretary, who talks about what she asked about the symbols, saying that they are actually Hebrew glyphs and they spell the word Leviathan, a sea creature from Jewish mythology. Then Kara goes to pick up Stephen from school and finds him bleeding from the nose, as he got into a fight when one of his classmates said that Ellie was dead. When they get home, Kara looks up information about the word Leviathan on the internet and the drawings she finds correspond to the serpent she had seen next to the article she researched earlier about the strange phrase Salviti Coagula, which she had seen above the front door of her house. Then, she decides to examine the record player and plays it, the recording starts counting, while the abacus in the playroom starts moving on its own and the secret door opens. Suddenly, Stephen strangely starts counting too while walking towards the hidden compartment. Fortunately, Kira hears him, turns off the record player, and rushes to her son. Not understanding why he was counting, she asks him why he was doing that, but the boy shows no signs of remembering what he just did. Then, Kira goes to look at the painting of the man with two fingers raised in the living room and discovers that his name is John Featherston, where the Hebrew glyphs are also written in the image below his name. Kara searches his name on the internet and discovers that his entire family disappeared in that same house except for the daughter. At that moment, a strange breeze comes from under the basement door, causing the power to go out. Suddenly, Kira hears Stephen's voice asking for help and she runs to where he was, realizing that the voice was coming from behind the basement door, so she immediately tries to get him out, but the lock is stuck and she cannot find the key. When she looks through the keyhole, a horrifying eye stares back at her, and she quickly moves away only to see that Stephen was actually in the hallway. Out of nowhere, the basement door opens on its own and the power comes back, revealing that the key was on the floor the whole time. Kara then hangs it up again and then enters the basement using her phone's flashlight. As soon as she enters, the door closes behind her, she calls for Stephen's help, but he is too short to reach the key, so he goes to get a chair. 
While waiting, Kira tries to look into the basement again and accidentally drops her phone, then realizing that there was something alive down there, as she hears a horrible grunt followed by heavy breathing, which to make matters worse, now seemed to be heading towards where she was. Kara is terrified and asks Stephen to open the door quickly, but the boy, even with the key, is unable to. The beings seem to be getting closer and closer to her up the stairs and Kara becomes even more desperate to get out, fortunately, Brian arrives just in time and manages to open the door. Later, Kara tells Brian that she felt a presence down there and that her phone fell. She also comments on the fact that the Featherston family disappeared like Ellie, but Brian thinks she is seeing things that do not exist. To help her calm down, Brian goes down to the basement to look for her phone, but the only thing he finds is a ball of hair. The next day, Kara goes to the National College of Mathematics, which has a Featherston wing, to talk to Dr. Remy Fournet, a brilliant mathematician. Kara gives him a piece of paper with the equation she found in the basement and when he reads it aloud, the lights flicker for a second. After solving the equation, Remy tells her more about Featherston, saying that this used to be his office, and he was a colleague of Erwin Schrödinger, the famous physicist. Featherston worked closely with him until his son became ill and he disappeared from academic life. What happened to him is a mystery, and the only person who might know more is his daughter named Rose, from whom Kira bought the house, but Rose never talks about it because she never recovered. Fournette manages to make a graph representing the equation Kara brought in based on this, he thinks it represents other dimensions, but this is more complex than anything he has ever seen before. He will need time to work on it, but he promises to call Kara with the results. At the end of the day, Kara returns home with a new phone. As soon as she turns it on, she receives a call from Remy, who says he tried to call her for a while and a strange voice always answered, but instead of speaking, it just counted. Then he explains that he talked to a colleague about the equation and believes it is related to a branch of mathematics created by alchemists in the 12th century. It seems to be some kind of incomplete sequence or unfinished enchantment, which is definitely related to other dimensions. This colleague has also come across a similar equation before in a house in Belgium where a family also disappeared into thin air. Brian goes to see how Kira was doing and leaves Stephen alone in the playroom, where the abacus is starting to move on its own again. Kira shows Brian the information she got about the glyphs, saying they meant Leviathan as serpent of the abyss and that the house they were in was called Chaos, which in Greek means the void before time, also known as the abyss. Again, Brian thinks she is just reading too much into it and that it's all just normal decorations of the house, so to make her forget about it, he tries to destroy the equation plate that was in the basement. However, the sledgehammer just bounces off without even denting it. At that moment, the record player starts playing and Steven moves towards the secret compartment where he sees a dark-looking Ellie, who continues to count while glyphs are carved on her face. Steven, frightened, screams for help, but when his parents get there, there is no one, but when Brian enters to check, he finds her phone. The next day, Kira receives a call from her real estate agent with information on where she can find Featherston's daughter. Kira drives to a nursing home where she finds the elderly Rose in a wheelchair inside a chapel, and her nurse warns that she doesn't talk much these days. Deciding to try anyway, Kira tells Rose about Ellie and asks for her help. After a moment of silence, Rose writes in a notebook the word Leviathan, saying it was one of the seven princes of hell, but that was not its true name. She also says that her father brought it into the world when her brother became sick and science couldn't cure him. She mentions that a ritual was performed there that brought something very ancient to the surface, but it wasn't just in the basement, but in the entire house. On the way back, Kira tries to call Remy, but the line only has static and a voice counting. Meanwhile, Brian started doing some research on his own, he connects the triangles with the pentagon, which ultimately forms a five-pointed star. Kira arrives and he shows her this, where the star with glyphs around it represents the demon Baphomet, the gatekeeper of hell. His photo shows him making the same hand sign as Featherston in the painting in the living room, and his arms also say, solve coagula. Seeing all this, Kira realizes that Rose was right when she said the whole house was designed around this. Kira turns on the record player to explain to Brian that the equation probably opens some portal, at the same time Stephen loses control of his drone that goes into the basement and he follows it, and as he goes down the stairs he starts counting each step. When he reaches the last one, a macabre silhouette forms right next to him in the darkness and suddenly he screams, at the same time the power also goes out. His parents quickly go after him, but only find the drone, then they start searching the house, but with no success. Then in the living room, Stephen's ball appears bouncing down the stairs, 
And that's when they can hear the boy's voice starting to count and they follow to find their son who was about to enter the secret compartment. They quickly take Stephen to check him, discovering that the boy is burning with fever. While Brian goes to get water, Kira tries to take Stephen's shirt off and is shocked when she sees on his chest the mark of the five-pointed star. Suddenly, Stephen says he remembers riding a horned beast and starts counting again. Kira runs to find Brian, but he was also under some kind of trance in the living room, doing a countdown, and once he reaches zero, he says the words, it's here. The basement door opens on its own and a strong wind comes out of it while the sounds of something slowly approaching can be heard. Kira, seeing that the being was already close, runs to hide in another room, seeing that the footsteps and heavy breathing stopped, she tries to leave but is surprised by a bizarre creature that tries to grab her but she runs and goes to the basement with a flashlight in hand believing that now she could find her daughter. The stairs, however, were now magically much longer than they were and there is a door at the end, so Kira runs towards it to escape from the beast that was chasing her. She hides behind a wall at the bottom and waits for the demon to leave, to then start looking for Ellie. When she manages to get out, she finds a tunnel and after crossing it, is shocked to find a huge open area with thousands of people walking in line and counting. Kira searches for Ellie among them and after searching a lot, she finds her thanks to her tattoo. She then tries to wake up her daughter who seems to be in a deep trance. Kira drags her away from the stairs, trying to hurry because she can hear the demon following them, and in the agony, she drops the flashlight. When they manage to return to the house, the power is back and Kira closes the basement door to keep the beast inside. The monster apparently cannot pass through the door and Ellie begins to regain consciousness. Seeing that her family is okay, Kira then says they will leave immediately, but when she approaches the front door, she finds her flashlight on the floor. She opens the door and is shocked to find a staircase leading to the top of the basement, indicating that somehow they were still down there. When Kira turns around, she sees Ellie, Stephen, and Brian start counting and walking in another direction. Soon Kira also starts counting, and we see the house from the outside, which was no longer in the forest we saw before, but in a desolate and eerie place.